Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here in Moscow. I would like to thank Boris and uh, his team for this invitation. And uh, I'm very happy to present today with you the principal design and the clinical results of the fine visual trifocal IOL. I'll share everything I will show you with Christophe Pagnoul and Yvette Ouvrech. Um, so the diffractive lens, the fine vision uses a new concept. Uh, it's a trifocal diffractive IOL. It's uh, intended to improve intermediate vision with a specific foci, but at the same time not impairing near and far vision over existing diffractive multifocal designs. And also we still want it to favor distance vision in mesopic condition. Fine vision is standing for a macronym for distance and intermediate because this is the main purpose of the IOL design. Uh, it's a hydrophilic material. Uh, the surface is fully covered with the diffractive design. It's aspheric to compensate for corneal circulation and it's uh, micro incision lens. Uh, it's able to go through 1.8 mm and also it's apodized. I will come back on this a bit later. Uh, this is a lens uh, injected through a 1.8 uh, corneal, clear corneal incision and uh, as you can see it goes uh, in the bag and uh, then uh, you can uh, center it nicely like that. So um, <coughs> the partners of the project were uh, Physio, the manufacturer of the lens, uh, the Liège Space Center for simulation and uh, optical design, and uh, myself. Uh, this is while we were working on the, on the IOM, at the same time they were in the same Liège Space Center working on the Planck telescope, uh, which is a very monofocal design, by the way, it's uh, now orbiting around Earth and uh, capturing the Big Bang uh, radiation. So uh, back to IOLs, uh, uh, any diffractive bifocal, bifocal IOL can be uh, thought about this. It's a monofocal lens with a kinoform, and a kinoform is like a deflector. It will split light in two orders, maybe more than two, but two main orders. The zero order, which is not deviated, so it's like you would still have a monofocal lens. But there is also a small percentage of light which is deviated toward, toward order one. And this is the addition. Uh, the width of the diffractive steps governs the addition. So the larger the rings, the less power you have for the addition. And you could think of designing a bifocal intermediate and distance vision IOL, and therefore you would have less uh, steps in the, in the center. Apodization is a reduction of the height of the steps, so if you diminish the step toward periphery, you will send more light toward the zero, which is the far vision order, than to the near vision order. It's very useful and it accounted for the success of the restore initially because when you have uh, mesopic condition, it's important that you don't impair too much uh, the distance vision and apodization is a nice way to do so because all the human pupils that I know, they tend to become larger at night and smaller at daytime. So apodization to me is something very useful uh, in uh, IOL design. And uh, if you go now by numbers, you see 40% for distance, 40% for me and bifocal, but where are the remaining 20%? That's the question. To understand a bit better this, you need to look at what I told you, the separation between the zero order, where light not deviated by the kinoform part, and the first order, going to the near. If you know diffraction a bit, you will realize that the second order, there is a second order, it's only 4% of the intensity of the diffracted light, but interestingly, this will be going to a double vergence. For, so if the first order is 3.5, the second order will be automatically the double of it, which is plus seven. But not very useful because plus seven would be a very close for sign and uh, usually people, they don't read that like uh, 10 centimeters. And if you look at what happens when you shine light through a monofocal IOL, of course it's one for sign. 
very sharp for sun. And uh, if you do the same experiment with, uh, this was a restore lens, you see that if you go from uh, uh, distance toward the distance for sun, you can see that you have still little rings of light around, this is the halo. This is intermediate vision, not very good, not very sharp for sun, it's a bifocal lens. And now you go to the near for sun and you can see the big ring of light, this is a distance energy, but of course we focus because now it's a near for sun. So this lens is really distance uh, dominant in terms of visual quality. And here you can see a bifocal, this is a technique now, and you can see the distance for sight, the near for sight, and a very near for sight, for example, um, which is uh, probably not very useful for vision. So with this in mind, you can now think, how could I achieve a trifocal IOM? And this is, in fact, conceivable if you add two bifocal designs, one for distance and one for intermediate. And the good thing is, if you remember what I told you about the orders, of course the second order of the distance and near part will be plus seven, not very useful, but the second, second order for the bifocal distance and intermediate part will be useful for near vision because it's, will, it will be the double of the intermediate. So now you go from 175 to 3, 150 and this is useful for near vision. This is why this lens uses better light than bifocal because it uses like 45% of what would be lost with a bifocal to create the intermediate for sun. So if you combine a near and intermediate on the top with a near and distance, I'm sorry, a distance and intermediate on the top with a distance and near on the bottom, then you have this uh, specific new uh, trifocal uh, design which is the basis of the uh, fine vision uh, physio IOL. So this is a bit busy on the slide, but it's just summarizing with numbers what I just explained to you with graphics. Um, so a combination of two diffractive grating to achieve intermediate foci and uh, achieving a true uh, intermediate uh, vision. This was published for those of you who want to know more about that in the JCRS. And we have a patent also uh, that you can see on this slide. Now, once we have this, we want to optimize optical quality. Apodization, as I told you, was performed to favor distant vision under mesopic condition. And you can see here clearly that the steps are reduced in terms of height toward the periphery. Um, convolution is another thing that you can use to achieve better optical quality. Every time you have a sharp edge, this is like a little scatter. If you smooth the edge of every step, then you have less scattered light, again, favoring uh, distance energy focalization and reducing unwanted scatter. So it's just a smoothing profile that increases the optical quality of the eyewear. And finally, it was also asphorized, um, and uh, believe it or not, I was involved in the calculation of it, uh, especially for the monofocal version a few years before we worked on the trifocal one. So um, I did this, uh, as you can see here, to improve again sharpness and asphorization. We improve sharpness at every uh, four side near, distance, and of course, intermediate. Um, we did in vitro testing first before we did the first human implantation. This is a bifocal, um, um, it's not a resume, uh, it's the um, bifocal diffractive from a technique. And you can see that here, if you compare with a micro F, this is a true focal um, MTF curve, you can see that there is like a bump in the middle, which is for intermediate vision. Because of apodization here, you can see that if you now investigate the physical IOL, which can work for any pupil size, even small pupil size, um, you can see that apodization tend to increase uh, the energy at the distance for psi with pupil dilation, 4.5 versus 3 in the red curve. And uh, of course, when the pupil dilates, you lose a little bit of energy at the intermediate and near for psi. Conversely, when the pupil constricts, uh, more energy is sent toward near and intermediate because of the meiosis uh, reflex uh, and accommodative reflex. This is a nice curve that was made by Christophe Pagnol to show you at the same time a true frequency 
MTF and a through focus MTF. But again, it's like a visual tri dimensional envelope for distance near and intermediate with regard to uh, the frequency uh, variation and also the vergence. You can see that that 3 mm uh, here, uh, and if you compare it to the 3.75 and to the 4.5, the far uh, vision energy uh, increases. We compare this IOL with other uh, bifocal uh, diffractive uh, technologies, Technis, Acrylisa, Acryl software store. Uh, some of some of them are apodized. Some of their some of them are not. Some are hydrophobic. Some are hydrophilic. They were all the same power. And uh, this is here in the curve. The red curve is for the fine trifocal lens. You can see this is the only IOL achieving reasonable contrast for intermediate vision. Um, the peaks for near are a bit spread because of the differences in the near power add. Uh, within those uh, different uh, bifocal uh, categories. Uh, if you compare this, these uh, IOLs for distance vision, you see that they are reasonably um, similar. The restore plus 3, because of its sharp apodization, uh, has the maximal energy. Uh, but yet you still have a little bit of power for the intermediate vision with the fine vision. And uh, for the large pupil, uh, again you can see uh, that uh, there is a variation, especially for apodized uh, lenses, uh, the fine vision and the restore. Uh, using a US Air Force target is maybe more visually speaking. Uh, this is for far vision. We compared for 3 mm pupil, artificial pupil, and 4.5 mm pupil. You can see that if you compare the apodized lens, they tend to uh, have more contrast at larger. Uh, Aperture. This was uh, now. Now we. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I think I'm going backward. Sorry. Um, this is now near vision. Uh, near vision here. Uh, again, apodization makes near vision less contrasted with uh, pupil uh, dilation. And intermediate vision, which is the main task, you can see the fine vision. Uh, has a reasonable contrast, allowing you to identify the grating orientation, uh, whereas the three other bifocal lenses uh, do not allow to identify uh, the uh, grating. And this is still true for the 4.5 diameter. Finally, the multicentric observational study that was performed initially on human eyes included almost 200 eyes. Um, the visual acuity was 0.67 decimal and the mean IOL power implanted was close to 21.5 diopters. Patients were followed for the first three months. This is an example of the post-operative fit and outcome. The lens is immune to uh, decentration opposed to some designs, especially sectorial design, in which you really need to be well centered within the pupil ring. As the lens will not work as is intended. Diffractive technology is way more immune to any decentration. This is why I like it uh, better than refractive multifocal IOLs. Possibly, we have a, a, a nice record equivalent uh, achieved target, and uh, and uh, the far visual acuity uh, was monocularly and binocularly close to uh, one 2020. Uh, and the near visual acuity also was satisfactory with uh, Jago uh, 1, or even better than that, monocularly uncorrected and uh, binocularly uncorrected. Intermediate vision was equivalent to Paulino 3 or Jago 2. Intermediate vision was recorded around 70 centimeters, 65 to 70 centimeters. And uh, in my experience, most of my patients, I mean, non complain, complain about intermediate vision. Uh, and you can have usually a patient reading Parino 2, which is Jager like uh, 1.5 maybe, um, at um, 35 centimeters. And if you go to 70 centimeter distance, they just lose one line of near uh, vision uh, acuity because of the 
angular uh, variation in visual acuity, you need to increase the layer size, but it's still a very nice performance for intermediate vision. This is a defocus curve of the fine vision, and we compared it to uh, other defocus curve with bifocal designs, the plus three restore and the plus four restore, and you can see that there's no dip in the middle with the uh, fine vision curve, whereas the, the other bifocal design, they have a show in uh, the two, uh, between the two peaks of distance and near. So in conclusion, uh, we had uh, satisfactory outcomes at all study distances uh, and a clear superiority in intermediate vision for this design. We did not record any additional ghosting uh, phenomena uh, with a third focal point. Of course, they report hellos, like for all diffractive lenses, but we still think that uh, the trifocal uh, fine vision lens is a versatile third uh, generation diffractive eyewear, which may be useful in, uh, in, in practice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Denis. It was really a very interesting concept. Uh, we have to, I think, try it out more in clinical practice to know how it works in everybody's hands. Uh, I just wanted to know whether all these were a single procedure or were there any asymptomatic uh, uh, adjustment done in any of these patients? Now, for the first study I showed, the inclusion criteria were that uh, the patient should not have uh, common astigmatism because the lens is not toric yet. It will be soon available, I think, in a story version, but if you have astigmatism at the corneal plane, like for any diffractive technology, you need to compensate for it. But it was not the case in this professional study. I do sometimes myself, so it's a little bit of uh, incident placement, but if the, ins if the astigmatism is more than 1.25 diopters, usually I will have to do corneal enhancement, PRK or LASIK uh, after surgery. Do you do a, a little matter vision like the Acrotech system? Uh, I was very interesting about this. I have two questions. The intermediate uh, vision seem really in our patient and in your talk the most important thing because when we look at the PC, at the iPad and stuff like this, you are more intermediate like than near. That's the first question. That's the second one is, uh, uh, do you do some monovision system to increase the intermediate uh, uh, Yes, as you said, the incentive to realize a trifocal lenses was based on the fact that many patients that we implanted previously with bifocal lenses, they were not satisfied with intermediate vision iPads, uh, panels, driving panels in the cars, uh, sometimes computer screens. So we felt that there was a room to improve uh, this uh, performance. For your second question, uh, we don't do any, uh, I don't do at least, uh, any monovision strategy because I think it's very important that the lens which is intended to work well, uh, I mean, when I say well, at least like any like another bifocal eye well, but with this intermediate foci on top of it. Uh, if you do like a little monovision in one eye, then you will have a little defocus, myopic defocus, I assume. So the distance vision will not be as good as, this is, uh, as it is in perfect focus. And because the lens has a full range of useful vision, we don't feel it's necessary to compensate in one eye. This has been proposed for other IOL, especially for intermediate vision. Also, sometimes they say put this power in the right eye, dominant eye, and this power in the left eye for the same thing. But if you have a trifocal IOL, you don't need to do this. So you just target and show in both eyes. I think that's the best thing to do. Then you will have good binocular distance, which is very important also for stereopsis and uh, I think uh, neural adaptation. Uh, you speak a lot about the beauty of uh, uh, this new, new, new lens, but uh, what is the, the best beauty, scotopic beauty for, for the lens? For, for example, in my day to day, I have many patients with scotopic beauty between 6 and uh, 7 millimeters. Uh, you, you recommend uh, a trifocal, multifocal globular lens in, in some cases, for example, or? You mean scotopic or mesopic? Mesopic. 
Yes, yes, yes. yes. In my practice, uh, maybe the French they don't have such large pupils, but because they're usually in the cataract age or at least a presbyopic age, the pupil would not really go beyond 5.56 millimeter. So if the pupil is very large, this may be some relative contraindication regardless of the area where we put, I think. Um, so I didn't have any concern with this. And usually when you use a surgery, the pupil tend to be more constricted after surgery. That's what I noticed and it's been published also. Um, the other thing is if you have a small pupil, because of the central opening, which is uh, even a little bit less than one millimeter, you can use it uh, and it will work because you will have diffraction rings within this small pupil. So to me, pupil um, uh, dynamics are important in other designs, especially the refractive design, because they, by definition, could be dependent because locally you have the near vision, sometimes some intermediate vision, and sometimes some distance vision. So if you're not very centered, and sometimes in eyes with large kappa, the pupil is very nasal. And uh, this is, to me, a concern when you have an IOL which is pupil dependent. If the IOL is not geometrically pupil dependent, then it's not a big deal to me, as much as with a refractive design. It's a bit tricky because the fine vision is pupil dependent in a way that when it dilates, it sends more light to the distance vision. But it's not dependent in terms of centration much. And this is, uh, I think, uh, a good thing for those atypical eyes sometimes. Uh, one more question for you, Daniel. Uh, Daniel uh, from your graphs, we've seen that in comparing to bifocal lenses, uh, so we, we can expect a little bit less far vision in trifocal design. How much does this affect the perception of the application? Yeah, it depends on which design you compare it to. Uh, for example, it's very similar to the Technis. It's a bit less than Restore, because Restore has a big apodization, which you can consider as an apodization, with, which removes near vision after like 3.5, 3.6 millimeter of uh, diameter. Whereas the fine vision is fully apodized on the pupil. So when you look at the curves, it's less than the Restore, but it's similar almost to Technis and Acrevisa. And in my experience, uh, I didn't have complaints more than any other bifocal that I tried before um, in mesopy condition with this uh, fine vision lens. Um, patient would report halos around headlights, cards, like any other diffractive it comes with, but uh, not more in my experience. And one more question. We know that there are some other companies that are trying to, uh, to make trifocal lenses. Do you have any information on that? Um, <laughs> it's a sensitive issue. Um, I think they are trying to make it. I don't know the way they use because uh, it may be a different way. I don't know. <laughs> I hope it's a different way. <laughs> you see any gender difference in the level of satisfaction? A gender difference between males or females? Oh, a gender difference. Oh, there is a gender difference. <laughs> In, in patient, you mean, but in terms of satisfaction? satisfaction. Um, you mean which satisfaction? My or the patient? <laughs> <laughs> I take men and women same. <laughs> in my practice, I'm happy uh, regardless of the patient's gender, but on the patient side, um, I think, I wouldn't say that the women are more demanding, I think. I don't know. This is maybe the cultural difference between South Africa and France. Although we have many common things like wine and good food, but on, on this side, maybe I don't know. What do you think, John? <laughs> I have to answer to that. <laughs> My wife is here. <laughs> I was thinking about that a lot, and I think number one is Dr. Frank Bush is going to present numbers. I thought he was going to talk now, but about the gender difference, so I'd like to hear his numbers. I think the main thing, and that's uh, not scientifically proven, is that we don't seem to convey the message to the ladies. They sort of don't believe me. I don't know why. I, I don't think I explain it very badly. And I think they sort of get this wonderful idea of I'm going to be young again. 
and I'm going to see far and near, and it's going to be fantastic. And then they end up with the normal side effects of the lens. And that's not the same as being young again. I really think it's a matter of expectations, and we do not succeed in pointing out the difference between the expectation and the true result. That's what I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think what works with multifocal it should work with women. You always have to under promise and over deliver as well. <laughs> and yeah, you, are, you are young, but for the, the future, do you like this lens for you? Yes, yes. I think uh, especially uh, when I'm older and have a cataract, I would say that this is to me valuable for any diffractive or multifocal lens. When the patient has a cataract and a lot of scatter and poor vision, although sometimes they have still 20-25 vision, diffractive IOS are very good because when the patient wants near and distance vision and intermediate vision, you uh, won't really be sensitive to scatter or halo because it has way more halo before surgery than after that. Add on this the color changes that usually make them feel like they see the world with more vivid colors than before, the satisfaction of the patient would be greater to me with a multifocal than with a monofocal. Of course, it has to comply with all the contraindication exclusion that we know, but again, those patients that sometimes have near vision due to nuclear sclerosis, you know, they have myopic shift, they tend to read again Although they were presbyol, they couldn't read them because of this sclerosis. They read again, they're happy with this. At least this is one good side of the cataract. You do the cataract, you do monofocal, they say, oh, my distance vision is very good, but where is my knee gone? I heard that in the past when I did monofocal and not multifocal. I was, no, when I have nuclear myopic shift, multifocal IOS would be my first option in those patients. Similarly, People who want near and intermediate vision and they have 20-20 vision sometimes but a lot of scatter if you use the OCAS instrument, you have OSI, optical scatter index, up to sometimes 4, 5, 6, but the vision is 20-20. But the contrast is very poor at the retinal plane. The contrast with the diffractive eye will be better, way better than with the natural crystalline lens. So they will be happy. You know, that's another subjective uh, conclusion that I have. Have to my practice now. Can I ask you another question? Uh, I use a number of visual lenses, but monofocals. Yes. And we had two problems, and you will have to make me feel reassured about that. Number one is we had more than the normal PCO uh, rate, uh, rates, because this was a hydrophilic lens. Yes. And number two is the lens didn't seem to be stable in the bag for quite a long while. And then there was, if there was capsular contraction, it had an effect on the position of the lens in the bag, changing the refraction, and then the patient would come back and say, one day after operation I was perfect, and six weeks I was perfect, now six months later I'm not happy anymore than my optical or optical. Mm -hmm. Do you have that often? Or well, with this lens specifically, we also had it with some other plate haptic lenses, yeah. Um, hydrophilic plate uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, the hydrophilic lenses are more prone to induce uh, uh, post-secatural opacification. I and mean, yeah, I think this lens induces more than any hydrophilic one. Um, you have to do large rexes, I mean, more than 5.5 millimeter, uh, I think. Uh, I know you do it. but. Uh, I would say that in my practice and uh, the patient I've been doing, and now it's my by default IOL in the multifocal range, I didn't have any big issues with those kind of uh, back contraction or, or IOL shifts. So, may I yeah. show that uh, if you put a tension ring inside for all the hydrophilic uh, lenses, it's more stable and uh, you have an accurate vision after that and you have less uh, uh, depth of Can I also do that? I'm not saying that I'm getting it in every patient. You see, what, one, what I'd like to do is to simplify surgery because the more simple you make surgery, the easier it is for more people and the better the general outcome will be. 
and my capsular excess is about 5.5. But sometimes, you know, that's why the new laser step to FACO is going to be successful. Sometimes you get a 5 millimeter CCC, and other times you get a 6.5. It just happens. And if you compare it to the iris, the size of the iris and a big eye, you, are, you tend to make a bigger CCC, and then a small eye, you make a smaller one. And in the end, that's the result. So if you have a lens that is uh, resistant to contraction, it's just better if the lens is than if it's not resistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is why a femtosecond would be maybe useful in the future. Or you can use also some optical thing. I have a Zeiss microscope, which enables me to now project like a 5.5 virtual uh, image of the CCC. So. Uh, excuse me, Daniel. Um, you compare um, different trip IOL accruiser with trifocal uh, IOL from Fantasia. Since few months, I use trifocal from Zeiss accruiser. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that patients need, after surgery, more time to, to increase their far vision. It's not at, uh, at the day after surgery. They need few weeks to increase the far vision. And uh, it's difficult to manage patients after surgery uh, for that. Do you have the same problem with fine vision? Not that I know, I think. To me it's very equivalent to, as I said, bifocal designs. But I don't have experience with other trifocal lenses yeah, yeah. and the fine vision, so. Yeah. But not for with fine vision. No, I take your point, though. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Denny. Thank you very much. Uh, I would request Dr. Boris to please present the amendment to Dr. Denny. So next we have Dr. Frank. Sorry. <laughs>